Ettore Messina, before the double week, said that uh, Planeta Nikos, together with Real Madrid right now, are two best teams in Europe. And my question to you, Ritis, is do you agree with the statement uh, about Messina? How do you saw them in their double week? Did it change your opinion? And uh, just, yeah, do you think they're the second best team in Europe at the moment? I think if you do the power rankings, probably for December and January, they are alongside with Real Madrid. Uh, but I have to say, like, Barcelona is very consistent. Uh, they're getting wins. So I think they, they are um, in the second spot for a reason. Mm -hmm. But just talking about the quality uh, on defense, on offense, uh, Panathinaikos is, is like a, a really complete, solid team. Like, we see some, some of the teams that maybe have a pretty high offensive rating, but they struggle with the defensive rating. Uh, we see some teams vice versa, like they have a really good defense, but maybe lack some uh, quality offensively. Panathinaikos actually have both, a really solid defense and at the same time uh, a really good offense. Of Just course, to interrupt you for yeah. a second for about those stats, they are in the last 11 games. Yeah, they have the second best offense and the number one defense, and their net rating is the best in the last 11, yeah. uh, 12 rounds. Ex so exactly, that's, that's so spectacular. Actually, the numbers just prove what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, of course, like we saw them now without Lucas. I think with Lucas they have uh, more potential. Uh, talking about the pick and rolls uh, that that he he's playing with Lazor and everything else. Uh, for example, in Konas, it was all about Kendrick Nunn and Vildosa had a bad night. So basically, mm. if you're without Lucas, you need some someone else to step up. And that guy I'm expecting to make the step is, is Vildosa. I think he, he can play much better. But in general, uh, just like they, they look like a legit Final Four contender at the moment, the way they are playing. I just think there's a lot more belief right now in the system. Uh, I, f I remember in the beginning of the season, it was difficult to maybe understand what are the roles for these players because everyone is is uh, a new face in, in Panathinaikos. Uh, they changed the team completely. They have a new coach. And uh, in the beginning of the season, I couldn't predict that Jerry and Grant will be uh, defensive player of the year contender. I, mm. I couldn't predict that like Juancho or Gomez will be struggling, but Marius Grigonis will actually be one of the key players for them. It was hard to see all those things uh, coming, but right wow. now I can see them with clear roles. Uh, they know what they're doing. They have a lot of talent and they have a lot of confidence. Uh, so this uh, makes a team that is capable of beating anybody. Although in Konas, they, they, they suffered a defeat in, I would say, a very high-quality basketball game. Yeah, that was, to me, that was the, definitely the thing that uh, stuck in my memory. That was high-quality for, for both teams. And despite this loss that we are going to dive deep a little bit later, despite this loss in Konas, it, it did not change my mind. I have Planet and I cost right there at the top with Real Madrid. I think Ettore Mosina was completely on point and uh, they lost a game on Friday against another really good team that yeah. played at home, that played with a crowd that was probably the best, uh, let's say, in this season in, in Jalgir Arena. And, you know, Ponton Ecos showed that they can stay in games, they can they can compete, and we all know how hard it is to beat them at home. Yeah, yeah. Like, Oaka is, uh, I don't know, one of the, if not the loudest arena this season. With all the fans back, I think Panathinaikos have a super solid size in their roster with Mitoglou and Lesort in their front court. These are two big bodies. Okay, maybe they lack centimeters a little bit with Lesort against really tall centers. But, you know, muscle-wise, uh, the mobility, the, um, the sheer power, they're really mesmerizing to watch. They have the ability to defend in, in, in the backcourt as well. You know, with Grant taking the... Primary, uh, primary offensive players. But also, you know, Nunn and Slukas, I think, when they were playing together, they were really active on defense. So it's not like, yeah, both of those guys, you can target them, and a lot of teams do. Yeah. But they're really energetic, and I really like them fr from this. You know, you have Kendrick Nunn, who we, who we saw in Konas. Yeah. 
that guy is one of the top guards in Europe at the For moment. Sure. The way um, his shape has been rising, the way he just moves on the court. Yep. And that one move, I remember against Cavarius Hayes in the second half, he did a, a one crossover hesitation, like fake uh, that he's shooting and then exploded to his left hand. Yeah. And Cavarius Hayes almost, I don't know, kissed the, kissed the floor, you know. Yeah. He didn't lose his balance to the fullest, but he, he was definitely near that. The, the shots they made, um, so this loss against Jalgiris didn't don't change my opinion. I think they're the top team to beat, you know, top two team to beat in Europe at the moment. You're probably right, although, you know, the standings are crazy. Like, you have uh, absolutely two more teams with 15 wins. You have, for example, Olympiakos chasing them. We might be talking about Panathinaikos being in a very good moment and mm. Olympiakos facing some uh, difficulties. They, they have so many injured players, but there's just one win separating them. Like, this year mm. league is so competitive. About Kendrick Nunn, what I wanted to say, like, what I'm impressed... Uh, uh, I, I'm impressed with his game in general, but with what I'm impressed with the most half court, half court interview, half time, <laughs> half -time interview. <laughs> half -time I'm sorry, interview. I'm sorry. No, that was, uh, you had a control of the game in the second quarter, but what has changed during that momentum? Down six, down six right now. All right, thank you very much. Good luck. I don't know why it was like that. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, it was kind of funny, funny, but also awkward. Yeah. Um, but what I'm impressed with is his confidence. Like uh, other teams, of course, starting to put more emphasis on him. So mm. they are forcing him to his right. And he doesn't have a problem going to his right hand. Like it's his weaker hand. But okay, you, you do this. I drive to, to, to my right hand. I will find a way to finish with my left. But, mm. you know, that that's one thing about his confidence. The other thing is that uh, coming into the Jalgiris game, he had 29% from free. He and, doesn't, he and, doesn't and, care. And yeah. Jalgiris probably treated him as a 29% shooter in, in the first quarter. He does not care about those numbers. Yeah. He has confidence in his shot. He knows he can make those shots. And what happened is he scored 13 points in the first quarter. Hmm. Uh, I think there was one sequence where Jalgiris actually uh, went to help from the strong side, leaving Kendrick Nunn wide open. And, yeah, I, and that I, was I, the, I remember that. Blake. That was the 29% mm -hmm. treatment. And he hits three in a row. You cannot do that anymore. So he's a player that is capable of changing the flow of the game mm -hmm. on his own. Okay, versus Jalgiris, it was tough for him. He didn't have enough help, let's say, from Vildosa. Uh, Lucas didn't play. So even though Kendrick Nunn was scoring, in the second half, you could see more of the hero ball when they were down mm. by 10, by 12 in the, in the fourth quarter. Uh, he had seven turnovers. He tried to call a timeout uh, <laughs> when he was pressured um, to the uh, out of, near, near out of the bounds. Sideline. Yeah, mm -hmm. near, near the sideline. So that was a funny moment, but I think many NBA players coming into Europe have this one time where, where mm. they try to call a timeout with the ball once. in their hands. At, At least, least once. once. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but in general, I have to I have to agree with with, with you about Pantnekos and their their potential. Like one loss doesn't change it. Uh, oh, and you know, it was without Slukas. Yeah, and in the same week they and beat, we saw that in the they beat Milan 79-62. Mm -hmm. Again, Milan, I I wouldn't say they are a team on the rise, but in some games you see that Milan is actually a team that could be mm. in the playoffs and could maybe even compete for the final four. So when yeah. you play Milan, you never judge them by the standings. You always judge them by the quality in in the roster. And Pantnekos kept them with 62 points, right. which is impressive.